Let's talk about fitness and let's talk about how you can develop the optimal fitness protocols for you. So that includes what to do each day of the week and your fitness protocol across the week and indeed across the month and the year and even year to year. Are you looking to take your exercise performance and recovery to the next level? Dr. Andrew Huberman, a renowned neuroscientist and professor of neuroscience at Stanford University, has come forward with groundbreaking insights on how to supercharge your exercise routine without relying on steroids or other artificial means. Concepts are few, methods are many. That is, there are an infinite number of different programs and exercises and set and rep schemes and different runs and burpees and push-ups, et cetera, et cetera, that one can follow. However, there are really just a few basic concepts or principles of muscle physiology, of cardiovascular function, of connective tissue function that provide or set the basis for the adaptations that we call fitness or that lead to fitness. So I'm going to list those off now. We can talk about a fitness protocol that's really aimed mainly toward developing skill. That's one. Or speed. That's another. Or power, which is speed times strength or specifically strength or hypertrophy, growth of muscles or endurance, such as muscular endurance. Muscular endurance is for instance, your ability to stay in a plank position or to do a wall sit. Other forms of endurance like near pure anaerobic endurance. So a one minute sprint or less or a one minute all out cycling on a stationary bike, this sort of thing. Or endurance that occurs in the kind of three to 12 minute total duration range. So that might be sprints or high intensity interval type training. It could be a all out swim. It could be all out row. That's another form of endurance taps into different fuel systems, different aspects of muscle physiology, et cetera. And then endurance that lasts 30 minutes or more, which is typically what people think about when they think about endurance. But of course the other forms of endurance matter. So we've got skill, speed, power, strength, hypertrophy, muscular endurance, anaerobic endurance, and 30 minutes or more endurance type exercise and adaptations. Each and every one of these requires different principles, different concepts in order to improve, say your muscular strength or your hypertrophy or both. However, there's a general theme that sits beneath all adaptations leading to fitness. And that's what we're really going to set down as the base layer, the foundation of everything we talk about today. And that's that we need to think about what are the modifiable variables. Again, key thing to think about, what are you going to modify? What are you going to change in order to increase one or some of the various things I listed off before, skill, speed, power, strength, hypertrophy, endurance, et cetera, et cetera. Drill into that foundational protocol and I'll keep referring to it as the foundational protocol, not because it's the one that I use, although it is the one that I use, and not because it's the one that we're talking about today, although it's the one we're talking about today, but because we need some general framework from which to build out the more specific protocols that we'll get into in a bit more detail later. So in this foundational protocol for fitness, what you'll notice is that on any one given day, you're going to focus on one particular aspect of fitness. Maybe it's endurance, maybe it's strength, maybe it's hypertrophy. In particular, it might be hypertrophy for a particular muscle group or muscle groups. That said, across the entire week, it's designed to bring fitness and different forms of fitness to all aspects of your body. That's really gleaned from the scientific literature and the experts that is for you. So this fitness protocol is really about you. I just may refer to it as the one that I follow um, simply for ease of communication. And for me, my week begins on Sunday. So I do my very best to get a workout in on Sunday. And for me, that workout is that of a endurance workout. It's designed to either maintain or increase my endurance. And the endurance type that I'm referring to is endurance of 30 minutes or more. In fact, for me, the goal is always to get either 60 to 75 minutes of jogging. So this would be so-called zone two cardio. People probably have heard of zone two cardio, but if you haven't, that's okay. Zone two cardio is something that you could measure with a heart rate monitor or other device, but you don't need to. Zone two cardio is the kind of cardiovascular exercise in which you're pushing yourself to move such that you're breathing faster than normal. Your heart is beating faster than normal. However, you are still able to sustain a conversation and ideally early in the morning, so 7 a.m. or so, I train my legs 
on Monday. So that includes quadriceps, hamstrings, and calves. Why do I do that workout on Monday? And what is that workout designed to do? Well, that workout is really designed to make sure that I'm either maintaining or building strength in my legs. And this is not simply for aesthetic reasons. This is not simply to grow bigger calves or grow bigger quadriceps and hamstrings, although it can accomplish that as well, depending on how you train. We'll talk about details of training. The reason for training legs on Monday is several fold. First of all, they are the largest muscle groups of the body. And by training your legs on Monday, it sets in motion a large number of metabolic processes that carry you some distance, even through the whole week in terms of elevating metabolism, in terms of amplifying certain hormonal events in your body, et cetera, that are really beneficial. In addition to that, I'm of the belief that the legs are the foundation of the body and provided you can train legs safely, that training legs is vitally important, not just for strength of the legs, but also for strength of your entire body. I do a series of heat cold contrast. In other words, I get really, really warm and then I get really, really cold. I get really, really warm and I get really, really cold repeatedly. And the way I do that is by getting into a hot sauna. So for me, that's really hot, but I've built up my heat conditioning. So please don't do this unless you've built up your uh, ability to withstand heat. And I'll get in for about 20 minutes, sometimes 15, but usually 20 minutes. Then I get out and then I will get into an ice bath or a cold water bath that's about 45 to 50 degrees. Fahrenheit. Again, don't get into water that's so cold that you go into shock. And really what this day is about is two things. First of all, I'm trying to accelerate recovery from the leg workout I did previously, maybe even benefits for the brain related to the cardiovascular benefits, because of course the brain needs a lot of blood flow and needs a lot of um, nutrients and other things flowing into and out of there, debris out and nutrients and other things into the brain. Heat can help accelerate that or improve that. And so I'm doing that to improve cardiovascular function, improve brain health. And then the cold contrast provides a sort of accelerator on that or an amplifier, I think is the better way to phrase it on that process. Because in the cold, you get vasoconstriction and then in the heat, you get vasodilation. And so you're maximizing that process, which is actually a neural process. Nerves actually innervate the blood vessels and capillaries and, and even the arteries in order to allow that constriction and dilation process to occur. On Wednesday, you train your torso and that's going to involve some pushing. So that's good for you. That might include some training of things like bench presses or incline presses, as well as shoulder presses or lateral raises, things for the shoulders, as well as for the back, some pulling exercises. These could be bent over rows or chin-ups or pull-ups. Again, there are an enormous number of exercise for each and every one of these muscle groups. Now, I believe there's a clear benefit to training all these muscle groups together on the same day.